for the future of drilling in the U.S. Uh, Alaska Senator uh, Mark Begich is uh, joining us now uh, this morning. He has been a very outspoken supporter of drilling in the northern waters. And good morning to you, sir. Good morning. You guys are having way too much fun this morning. You, you, can you do it? Did you even ask Arr. you to? Arr. Arr. Yes. Very nice. Wait I'm happy to join you. You know, in Alaska, we uh, uh, like to take pirate fishing ships out. So we're, we, we understand pirates up in Alaska. So we're okay with you. Okay. Uh, so, Senator. Senator, when you think about what's going on with Shell, if they were to get this production back online, and it sounds like they will be able to do so in yes. 2013, what is that going to do to the impact, uh, I mean, to really impact oil prices? I mean, do you think that unto itself will do anything? I don't think it does a, a direct impact to oil prices, but think about this. For 30 years, we've been talking about drilling up in the Arctic, and in the last few years, things have been moving forward. Shell has had uh, some efforts this year, and next year they'll be in uh, the water up there. And let me give you kind of a, a number that I think is an important number. Just in Chukchi, Beaufort Sea, the Arctic, 24 to 26 billion barrels of oil of they know today. My guess is it's probably closer to 40 to 50 once they start developing that. So it's a significant amount uh, for the oil pipeline in Alaska to utilize, but it may not have a direct uh, immediate impact on oil pricing, but it does get more oil into the pipeline and get more into me domestic production in an area that people have said right. for years that would never happen, and, it, and it's happening now. Senator, you're, you're a Democrat, um, and invariably the discussion comes up about the environment and these environmentalists, some of whom have tried to block this. How do you, how do you deal with that and reconcile some of those issues? Well, you know, one thing about drilling up the Arctic, as I said, about 30 years of waiting and pushing uh, to, to get the Arctic open is as hard as trying to get EPA to change their mind and getting Democrats on board sometimes with oil and gas development. But I think what we've done, you know, I'm born and raised in the state. Our, our focus is to do it right, make sure it's environmentally safe. Think about this. In the, in the late 80s, there was oil uh, exploration drilling in the Arctic, but you never heard about any spills because we take a high precaution up there, not only from a regulatory end, but also we have Alaska Native people with the issue of subsistence, making sure that we can do this the right way. So we're, we're very cautious, but at the same time, we're an oil and gas state, a natural resource state. And, you know, I spend a lot of time talking to Democrats and environmental community about how we're doing it. And a good example is, Look at what Shell did. They, they stopped the drilling at one point when the ice was moving in the wrong direction. Uh, they have not, they've only done the pilot uh, holes this year. Next year they'll move forward. What that says is the rules we've set out for them to operate under, they're following and it's working in the right direction. So you, you, it's a constant, to be very frank with you, it's a constant education to members and sitting down with the environmental community and saying, look, here's how we're doing this. And at the same time, look at the track record in Alaska, and we've had great success over the many years we've been doing oil and gas. Senator, you're, you're making all these points. It, it, not only do you seem to, to approve of the, the environmental uh, aspects of it's done right, but it also seems like you're, you're okay with the profits that these private entities would be earning. Are you sure that you're in the right party? Maybe you need <laughs> to look in your soul and decide, uh, you know, maybe it's your problem. Well, now you're about to meet an Alaska Democrat. You know, we're for gun rights. It's like a Texas, yeah, it's like a Texas exactly. Democrat. Exactly. Uh. But you know, one of the things, and I, and I will say this, look at the Democrat caucus. Since 1980, or there has not to? been a Democrat. Well, I'm saying in 1980 was the last time a Democrat from Alaska has been in that caucus. Yeah. And so I spend every day. And, and you were a mayor. Well, and you were a mayor. Yeah. You had to balance a budget. So you've actually had a job where you uh, had to, you know. You had to do something. Yeah, and exactly. I come from the small business community. So right. you actually have to do these things, make a budget. Yeah. At the end of the You're day, you don't. <laughs> there we go. Wrapped in a I'm, convert, arg, I'm a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Right, we, hey, we, hey, we no, hey, Senator, be, be, before you go, a constituent just wrote in and wants to know. Uh, he says, since Alaska's got so much gas and oil, why are we paying the highest prices in the nation for fuel? He's well, watching, so you can answer him. You bet. That means they're watching at 2.30 in the morning yep. in Alaska. <laughs> uh, but here's, here's why. We don't have enough refinery capacity yeah. is one of our problems in small population. And our challenge right now, and maybe another day we can talk about gas from Alaska, we about 30% of the gas supply of the country is tied up in Alaska. And we're about exporting some of our product, but also making sure available for domestic. So our problem is refinery and also the capacity, the volume that we can sell and move okay. in Alaska. We're a small state population-wise. Right. Senator, uh, thank you uh, for playing along this morning. Uh, we Absolutely. appreciate it very much. A lot of fun. Thank you guys very much. Have a great day.